Hi everybody, it's uh, John back with another model final reveal video. Uh, this one was my entry for Tim Hedworth's 100 years of the RAF. Unfortunately, I was about four days late getting her finished, um, which I was a bit sad about, but uh, there we go. The kit is the Italeri 72nd scale um, C-47 Skytrain with the option of building the C-Mark III Dakota with RAF markings. And I did build the kit using the transfers from the box, but I used the um, the subject to build a kit prior uh, a model of the aircraft prior to D-Day because I wanted to do something a little bit different than everybody else usually does, where they build kits covered in invasion stripes. And to be honest with you, most RAF Dakotas weren't really paratroopers; they were um, dual-purpose aircraft, and most were used for logistical transport transporting troops from one area of the country to another or from one from one area of of the UK into into Europe after the invasion and they didn't carry invasion stripes they only really carried invasion stripes on invasion missions like operation overlord and market garden and whatnot but the majority of the, of the service career of most C47s and DC3s the aircraft didn't carry invasion stripes um, and I wanted to reflect this in this kit and show you what the aircraft would look like um, in normal guise. And I also wanted to try and do something with the, the paint scheme on the aircraft because I noticed a lot of DC-3s, um, they don't look like they've just come out of the showroom. They look pretty shabby and they look like they're not well looked after. And I wanted to reflect this in this kit as well. So I've sort of um, done something it was a bit of an experiment I wanted to try and use um, I wanted to try and use a type of paint where um, you sort of incorporated a different a slightly different color into the paint whilst you're painting the aircraft up to try and reflect this shabby look and the aircraft appears to be a sort of a olive drab and green overall appearance with uh, almost as if you've got paint coming through and that's exactly what I tried to reenact with this kit and I think the effect on it is actually quite good if I can turn the aircraft around a little bit to show you exactly what I mean the actual paint scheme on the on the aircraft try and find somewhere nice to hold it can you see how it's um it's quite it's not an overall uniform colour, and that's exactly what I tried to, to enact. Um, and I think I think it's worked quite well. The underside of the aircraft is just painted in light grey. And the top coat, I used a mixture of um, matte 26 light tan, um, just hinted into um, a matte coat olive drab. Um, and yeah, I like the results and the looks of it. The camouflage is quite good, but the markings are very nice as well. Most DC-3s um, had their uh, squadron um, ID behind the roundel itself. And the roundel um, was quite close to the rear tail of the aircraft. It was, as you can see there, it was, it was quite close. There are no markings for the underside of the aircraft at all. Nothing whatsoever. Um, and that is common as well with most US aircraft as well. They didn't have any um, any markings all over them underneath. Um, and that, yeah, I did like the look of this particular aircraft. The actual build itself, I quite like the Italieri kit. I think it's quite a good, nice fitting model. There's no fit issues with it whatsoever. There was quite a nasty uh, gap in the wing route on the port wing, which I had to fill. The other side, um, there wasn't really an issue with the with the wing route on the starboard side of the wing. And there weren't really any is issues with fit anywhere else. Um, although the undercarriage on this particular aircraft was a bit of a pig because... Um, it clips into two holes in the aperture of the nacelle there on both sides and then this like y-shaped um, grip at the back just 
it glues into position on the top where the wheels meet. So I had to, in theory, glue that arrangement together and then put the wheels in after as an afterthought to ensure that they still went round. And they do, but they were a right pig's ear to fit um, after you'd had the undercarriage put together and everything. They were a bit of a nightmare. Um, but apart from that, you know, the, the actual detail on the kit, although you can't see much of the interior of the detail, the cockpit interior is actually quite nice. I don't know if you can see any of the... There's two pilots in the front there. Um, you probably won't be able to see the instrument panel, but the instrument panel is painted up. You'll probably see the instrument panel a bit better. No, you can't see it at all. It's a shame. You'll probably see the instrument panel a little bit better when I do the build progress clips, which should be put out just slightly before this video um, to explain how the kit went together. And I didn't really have any issues with it. The actual, en I like the engines as well on this kit. The engines themselves are actually quite detailed. And I just painted them in, I don't know if it's going to show up very well. I just painted them in a, a semi matte black 85 and uh, primer grey because I quite like the use of primer grey for the gearboxes in the front behind the propellers um, but the kit itself as I said it, it, it was it was a dream actually it went together like a dream uh, the forward canopy um, windshield was a little bit of a finicky fit I had to file some of the top of the canopy shield down a little bit to get it to fit properly um, but apart from that yeah there wasn't any issues whatsoever very nice, very enjoyable build. Um, it goes together at first quite slowly because the interior is quite complicated in terms of the number of parts and bits you have to paint. But once the fuselage and the airframe goes together, there's very little left to put on it. Um, and then it's paint on away it goes. And, and uh, it, it was quite an enjoyable build to build. I have built an Airfix Dakota before. It was a long time ago. I think I built the AC-47 variant. And this kit is far superior to the Airfix old tool, but I don't think it's a patch on the Airfix new tool. Um, there's a subber on um, who's subscribed to my channel as well. Um, he's a lad who's actually doing a very interesting project at the moment of um, the museum's um, pieces in the Duxford Museum. Um, and he did it was an Italieri kit but it wasn't an Italieri mold it was actually an Isai mold and the kit differs from this one the interior differs quite substantially and I think the way the aircraft goes together the airframe goes together slightly different as well um, and I think these two kits are sort of on a par with one another uh, I think the Isai kit has slightly better lines um, I think it just I don't know his kit just looked a little bit more right um, but the Italeri kit is it's a no, it's quite a nice looking kit um, and the wings and the engines I'm not sure if the wing if, if the, the wings look okay but I'm not sure if the engines are totally correct on the Italieri kit because they just look a bit like I don't know there's something a bit unusual about the way in which the engine cowlings look they don't quite look right but I think the Esai kit was slightly more um, correct in terms of outline and the engine cowlings and the bays and everything. It just, I don't know, it just looked a bit better. So if you want to have a look at the build progress videos that he did, um, it's uh, James, James Fur's channel. Um, I'll put a link up to his video, although there is a link um, to his video um, on the inbox review that I did of this kit around about three months ago so it might be worth um, having a look at that and just going into into his video to see how his kit looked and also there's another subber who's an IPMS member down in uh, Devon and he built the new tall Dakota for a friend of his and his videos are called Doug's Dak and he's a <laughs> he's a superb modeler his, his work is worth checking out but he did the Airfix new tool Dakota for his friend Doug, and um, yeah, the, the the job he did on that was superb. And I think the Airfix new tool Dakota um, is just in another league. It just looks so much better. Um, it looks like a much better outline kit. But you know these these two, I mean the Eastside kit and the Italieri kit, they're they're sort of on a par age wise. 
Um, they're probably not as old as the FX tooling kit, but they're certainly on a par with the Revell model, um, which I think is the monogram kit originally. Uh, although Revell did release the Italeri kit and the Eastside kit in different boxings, which is quite interesting uh, over the years. Uh, so these, you know, they're all sort of on a, on a par with one another. But um, as to overall um, recommendations, yeah, I would recommend the Italieri Dakota. I think the American variant um, is quite a nice touch on it. The American variant has a navigation light that fits over the top of the tail fin on this kit, which isn't present on the REF one, of course. Um, and it, that looks quite nice as well. Uh, so, yeah, I would recommend the Italieri kit. I would also recommend... Uh, on viewing the videos that James did of the Esai model. Um, but I haven't built the Airfix kit, but I would probably recommend that over the, these two every time if, if you wanted a really, really top-notch 70-second scale deck. So that's the inbox review. Sorry, that's the, um, the final reveal done for this kit. I'll be doing a build progress clip on this one. You'll see that also. Um, so I hope this video has been of some use. Um, I hope you've liked the uh, the images and the finish and sorry Tim about not getting her finished but she was a little bit I did try we're actually in the middle of moving house as well at the moment so things aren't as easy at the moment as I was hoping them to be but uh, yeah I like the results of this one nice kit thank you very much for watching I'll see you again for the next one bye bye